Welcome back everybody. So over the past few videos, we've been talking about higher order differential equations. And in particular, in the last video, we showed how to solve those homogeneous equations. We saw that it leads again to a characteristic equation and Maybe, unfortunately, that characteristic equation is a higher degree polynomial, which requires a little bit more complexity to solve. But if we sort of step back from that for a second, it's entirely possible, even if it requires the aid of a computer to give us the roots of that characteristic equation. Now, if we follow back what we did for second order equations, after we learned how to solve homogeneous constant coefficient uh, equations, the next thing that we started looking at is non-homogeneous equations. So in today's lecture, we're going to update that. We are going to take all of the theory that we built up for non-homogeneous equations in the second order differential equation case and simply extend it to the nth order differential equation case. Now, most of this should be very intuitive for you. So really what I want to do is I want to focus on maybe some of the differences or some of the things that you might see happening that you couldn't see happen with second order equations. For example, uh, multiple or repeated roots of complex roots to your characteristic equation, right? Because that's going to put, for example, a T in front of your sine and cosine terms. Okay, that's enough of me talking about it. Let's actually go ahead and just jump right into it. And the way that I want to proceed through the lecture today is an example-driven lecture. So I'm going to just give you a ton of examples and we're just going to talk through them. And if you'd like, you can pause the video and you can work through them to see if you get the same answer that I'm going to give you. So here's my first one of the day. So, Third order equation, y triple prime minus 3y double prime, and then plus 3y prime, and then minus y. And again, I said that I wanted to look at non-homogeneous equations, so let's put this equal to 4e to the t. Okay, well, again, if we remember what we did for second order equations, the first thing is we focus on the homogeneous equation, right? We have to identify what we should use for a specific part, and that is directly related to what we get out of the homogeneous part. So let's start with the characteristic equation. So the characteristic equation. Well, in this case, we're going to get an r cubed coming from the y triple prime term, and then minus 3r squared, plus 3r uh, minus 1 is equal to 0. Again, it's the characteristic equation. This is associated to the homogeneous equation. Therefore, it's equal to 0. Well, this actually, it might take a little bit of recognition here, but this is an expansion according to the binomial theorem. And in fact, this is just r minus 1 cubed is equal to 0, which clearly gives me only one root to this equation r equal to 1, let's put it in a little box to emphasize it. But the key here now is that it is a triple root to this equation, right? This is one of the complexities of working with higher order differential equations. Multiple roots are not really that uncommon. And they're a little bit hard to foresee, right? If I just gave you this equation without doing any work, you probably off the bat were not able to guess that it had a triple root. But nonetheless, let's see what happens. This gives us a homogeneous solution. So a homogeneous solution. Now we have a triple root. So this is going to give us, let's call it yh of t. I like h for homogeneous here. c1 e to the t, that's the one that comes from the first root. Then we saw with second order equations that when you have a double root, you need to multiply a t in here. That comes from the method of undetermined coefficients. And then we can put another term in here. This is a triple root. So we get a C3t squared e to the t term. Right? So one root, two root, three roots. Three linearly independent solutions. And that notion of linear independence, again, comes from the Ronskian from the previous section. Well, that means... If we start looking at the non-homogeneous equation again, we've got an issue, right? Because it has the same exponent 
as our characteristic equation gave us. And so that means that the specific part, remember this is the part that solves just the inhomogeneous equation. We called it capital Y just to distinguish it from the homogeneous part. Well, this is going to have an undetermined coefficient, a, and then to get away from all of these repeated roots, I need a t cubed in here. I need to go up one more order of t, so I get e to the t. t cubed, e to the t. That is going to allow me to identify the specific solution to this homo uh, inhomogeneous or non-homogeneous differential equation. Now, I'm going to let you maybe pause the video and proceed. You can put this thing into the differential equation and you can find that A is equal to 2 thirds, okay? So I'm going to leave you to have the fun of doing this. It's a nice exercise to work through, just putting this specific part into the differential equation. But what all of this gives you, we already know from what we've done with second order equations, it gives you a solution to the, the non-homogeneous equation given first by the parts coming from the homogeneous solution. So that's my yh right above me. So that's this. And then plus the specific part, which is 2 thirds t cubed e to the t. Right, so nothing too uh, fancy, nothing too out of the ordinary here. I, really the purpose of this is just to emphasize to you that repeated roots are much more common for higher order equations, and therefore we have to take care of this when we work through the uh, inhomogeneous uh, solution, a specific part. Okay, let's keep it going. Let's keep having fun with this. Let's look at another example, okay? So all of these examples are going to provide you with some uh, equations that you can work through to make sure that you can really cement your, uh, your understanding here. So I'm going to use a fourth order differential equation uh, plus 2y double prime plus y and this is going to equal to 3 times sine of t minus 5 times cosine of t. Okay, again, let's proceed as we just did above, okay? So characteristic equation. I'm going to just say char equation just because characteristic equation is a long word and it allows me the opportunity to misspell something that I probably shouldn't misspell. So let's try and avoid that. But the characteristic equation here is going to be r to the 4 plus 2r squared plus 1 is equal to 0. Again, this is a binomial expansion, right? So I'm picking these examples because they offer up something unique that we see with higher order equations. So in this case, I get r squared plus 1 squared is equal to 0. And in this case, now I get double roots at plus or minus i. Okay? So doubled up complex roots. So let's just go right ahead here. This gives me that my homogeneous solution is given by, well, there is a cosine and a sine term coming from the fact that I have uh, complex roots, but also they're doubled up. So I'm going to write it like this c1 plus uh, c2t cos of t plus c3 plus c4t sine of t. Now, all I did is I sucked up all four of those equations and I coupled them by the sine and cosine term. Look at c1 cos of t, that comes from one of the complex roots, and c3 sine of t, that's its pairing. Then the fact that this is a double root coming from the square here gives me this t as well, right? So c2t times cos is the next solution, again, given from that reduction of order technique uh, that we use to identify repeated roots. So the question is, how do you handle this now, right? What do I do? Because you can see that cosine is on the right-hand side of this non-homogeneous equation. Sine is also there, but it wouldn't matter because we know that when we have cosine, we always get both sine and cosine. But in this case, this means that the specific part, 
So the specific part, well, this thing is going to be y of t is equal to, so first of all, we have an unknown constant, our coefficient, and we need to get cosine, but we've already got a constant times cosine and a t times cosine. So just like with the previous example, we've got to go up a power in t, so we get t squared cos of t plus b t squared sine of t. Right, so the t squared is coming from the fact that I already have the constant and I already have the t. So if you remember what we did with, with uh, second order equations, we always needed to multiply t's in until we get away from solutions to the homogeneous equation. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and again, you can pause the video and you can figure out what a and b are. All you need to do is take derivatives and put them into this differential equation. But for the sake of exposition, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you that in this case, a is equal to minus 3 eighths and B is equal to 5 eighths. And so this gives me a solution to my differential equation, which is the homogeneous part. So just what I have below me here. So let's go ahead and, and keep writing that piece. And then plus the specific part. So here, minus 3 eighths t squared cos of t, and then plus 5 eighths t squared sine of t. So again, if you're, if you're watching along at home with this video, what I would love for you to do is pause it and try and get that as your answer. All right, try and work through every single detail of this equation until you arrive at my solution. Okay, so what you should take away from this is that it's really nothing all that new, right? It's very, very similar to what we did with second order equations. But what I've been emphasizing with these examples is that there's little complexities that arise, right? And those little complexities come from the fact that you can have multiple roots to higher order characteristic equations. This is really the main problem that's given to us. But nonetheless, you know, if you got good with second order equations, then you could probably do this very, very well, right? Doing a couple examples of this means that you could probably do it in your sleep if you really worked on those second order equations. So let's keep having fun with this. Let's look at y triple prime minus four y prime, and then this is equal to t plus three cos of t uh, plus, e to the minus t. All right, let's see what we got here. Well, first thing is, let's get the homogeneous equation, right? The homogeneous solution is the most critical part of this. I'm going to skip right to what it is. So the homogeneous solution. Well, in this case, the characteristic equation is r cubed minus for r. So there is one solution with r equal to zero. That's a constant solution. So that's c1, c1 times one, right? That's e to the zero. Then there is a root at plus two and a root at minus two. So that leads to homogeneous solutions that look like this. Okay, so that, that is my homogeneous solution. Now, We've already seen how to handle this, right? I have one term here, I have two terms here, and I have a third term here. We know that if we want to tackle this whole non-homogeneous equation, we've just got to break it down into three separate equations and subtract, and sorry, add up all of their solutions to give us what we need. Okay, so, if we are going to solve y triple prime minus four y prime is equal to t, so that's the first term on the right. Well then, we are going to use, well, let's take a look at this for a moment, okay? We would need to use, this is a t, so we need to use a linear function. So we would do something like a t plus b. Now, if you go through and try that, you're gonna see it doesn't work. 
Now, let's think about why, right? Because now maybe you're, maybe you're sweating a little bit and you're thinking, you know, Jason, everything you told me now is being violated. But be careful, right? Look what's happening here. I'm assuming that I have a constant term. But that constant term is already a solution to the homogeneous equation. So we are assuming a particular form here that has a solution to the homogeneous equation in it. To get rid of that thing, we need to multiply everything by t, the whole piece of it, okay? This is maybe the most confusing or the most uh, complex aspect of today's lecture. But nonetheless, this is going to give you this thing right here. Now, I know that some of you would be tempted to just put maybe AT in, but again, you will see that that will not work. You have to take that whole specific part that you were going to use here and multiply it by T. Be very, very, very careful about this. Now, in this case, actually, you're going to find that A is equal to minus 1 8. So that's minus 1 8 T squared. And in fact, B is equal to 0. That's the issue that you would have, right? If you just wrote BT on the, on the side here, or AT, whatever one you wanted to use, you would see that it doesn't work. You need that quadratic term in order to solve this thing. That's a very important aspect. The rest of it is fairly straightforward, right? Because now we don't have to worry about repeated roots here or anything. So if this is equal to three cos of T, Well, now we can use a specific part. Cosine is not a solution to the homogeneous equation, so I don't have to worry about multiplying t's in, and therefore I don't have to worry about, you know, some annoying derivatives or anything like that, right? Life is uh, pretty good as far as I'm concerned here. Well, let's do, uh, let's say, c cos of t. Again, this is cos of t. You want that cos of t coming up here just because it's self-replicating under derivatives. Uh, but you also need to include the sine term as well, again, because sine and cosine are self-replicating. They sort of swap after each derivative. Again, I'm going to go ahead and give you the solution to this thing. In fact, you can find uh, that b, or sorry, that uh, c is equal to zero, and d is equal to uh, minus three-fifths. Okay, so now we're just knocking them off. Life is good. We got one more to look at here. Y triple prime minus 4Y prime is equal to e to the minus t. Again, I love e to the minus t in this context. Why? It's not a solution to my homogeneous equation. Life is good, right? My specific part with an undetermined coefficient is going to be e times e to the minus t. Now, be careful, I said e twice there, one of them is capitalized to represent the fact that it's just a coefficient, and then we have e, which is, you know, our favorite function of all time in this class. And in this case, you get capital E is equal to 1 eighth. But that means that we are now done, right? Because that gives a full solution to this differential equation. What does this give us? gives us the homogeneous part, c1 plus c2 e to the 2t plus c3 e to the minus 2t, plus the sum of all the specific parts, so minus 1 over 8t squared, that's the first piece, and then minus 3 over 5 sine of t, that's the second piece right here, and then plus 1 8 e to the minus t, that's the third piece right here. So what did we learn? That it's very, very similar to what we learned with second order equations. The only complexity here is that repeated roots are much more common and therefore we need to be careful, right? You need to be very, very careful, especially right here. This is probably the only piece of the lecture that might have thrown you off. If I'm gonna be completely honest, it threw me off as well whenever I was working through this. So this takes a little bit of care. We take what we were going to use for the specific part, but because even just one piece of it is a solution to the homogeneous equation, the whole thing gets multiplied by t. You have to be very, very, very careful with this. This is a slight nuance, 
but I think that you can handle it. Okay, so if you remember what we did with this for second order equations, we saw that this method of undetermined coefficients really only works whenever the right hand side is like an exponential, a cosine, sine, or a polynomial, or a mixture of those. We saw that when it's not one of those functions, things get a little bit more complicated. We have to use variation of parameters. So that's exactly what we're going to come back to in the next video. We're going to show that extension to these higher order equations.